We are back for some more armor reviews. Side note, this video is sponsored by me and all the things you can buy from me. First, I promised you some Guild Wars armor and I know that you have all probably forgotten, but I have. We are rounding out the last of my patron and channel member requests, and no, I'm not taking any more for now, at least not ones I will guarantee to do, because it has taken me several years to get to the bottom of this list. I'm just very slow, alright? If you're new, my name is Jill Bearup and I'm an actor combatant, which means that when I look at costumes and costume armour, one of the things I think is, yeah, but how easy would it be to get on and off during a 16-hour day on set or on location? And I do love an armour tier list. So, top tier, I'd wear it. It looks comfortable, practical, cool, maybe historically accurate as well. I'm really not the person to be asking about historical accuracy, but that is one of the things that could be included. Pretty good. It has some of those elements, but not as much of it. And there are a few things about it that make me go, mm hmm, eh. It's serviceable, but I wouldn't write home about it. Could be worse. There are too many weird things or bad things to really recommend it to you, but you know, somebody tried a little bit at least. And everyone's favorite tier right at the bottom, just stab me now because that's what would happen if you wore this armor. We also have not actually armor for things which aren't actually armor, but there are several things in here which I would classify as not actually armor, which are called armor. So we're just going to take them at their word. This, for example, is the Elementalist Elite Sun Spear armor. It's giving I Dream of Genie vibes, honestly, and its claim to be armor is questionable, but I guess it's magic, but still. Would you want to wear this around all day? Would you want to wear this outside? Would you not get sunburned or frostbitten or what if it rained? Just no, just stab me now. As always, this is just my opinion, man, and I make no claim to objectivity. I'm here to entertain you, so let's do it. Baldur's Gate 3's Shadow Heart. Are we being topical? I think we're being topical. We're not usually topical. Isn't it wonderful? Okay, first question. Is this thing on her forehead, can she shoot laser beams or magic from the thing on her forehead? Because if so, cool. And if not, why no helmet? I mean, why no helmet is a common refrain on this channel, but come on. I would like to mention that she has tied her long hair back. So points for that. The layers around her face, probably still going to get in the way a little bit, just not as much as her very, very long hair would. But you know what? Pretty good. I can see that she's got a full hauberk on under that leather and metal breastplate thing and a gambeson underneath that. Now, is she going to be warm? Yes. Is she going to be dead? Hopefully not, unless they get her in the head and neck, but that's pretty much par for the course around here. I am a little concerned about those spiky bits because girl, just maybe don't raise your shoulders or your arms too high, but I'm only a little bit concerned because today we have many, many more examples of things which are the same, but worse. Fire Emblem, Byleth, Great Knight, and Gilgamesh from the Fate series. The note was the fully armored version, obviously. Doing these two as kind of a pair because you can tell they look quite similar. The Great Knight, big shield. Great, no helmet, uh, obviously, but full plate armor. Otherwise, those pauldrons are comically oversized. But what can you do? Overall, I would say pretty good. Maybe he can't wear a helmet because he needs excellent vision or something. But it is a very incongruous look to be armored all the way up to here and then just nothing to protect the top of your head at all. Unless I suppose he has a helmet and he's just not wearing it right now. In which case, excellent coverage, but I am still a little bit concerned by those comically oversized pauldrons. Bonus point for armoring the horse though. Gilgamesh I would award some points to for not having spikes on the giant pauldrons. That's good. And also because it's gold, I do love a bit of gilding, but I am very concerned about what's going on with the, the front of the breastplate there. I can see that there's some articulation at the sides, but I'm not convinced that there's any at the front. What's up with that part? What's up with that? I don't know. It makes me concerned. I don't know if he can bend forwards at all. Eh. Eh. Also, those red parts are flapping dramatically in the wind, but they obviously would go all the way to the ground. And while they're very historical, at that length, they are going to be a trip hazard. I would also like to thank my patron for specifying the full armor version of Gilgamesh, because naturally that made me go looking for the not full armor version of Gilgamesh, and it's amazing. Did he get interrupted while he was dressing? Is he okay? Does he need a minute? I don't know, but it's marvelous. Next up is Dragonheart. No helmet, obviously, and points taken off for having two swords, one of which is in reverse grip. 
why would you do that? But you know what, for a 1996 movie, you are actually pretty good. Also, I do like the sensible boots. I'd wear it to these fellas on the horses because you know what, somebody tried and I'm really appreciating the guy of Warwick vibes that we have going on here. Uh, except for this guy, because that's, that thing at the front of his helmet, that's called a nasal and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to go over your nose. Otherwise it doesn't really work at all. But you know, they went for the collar look with varying degrees of success and I appreciate that, you know? Guy of Warwick, incidentally, was another request and it's super, I'd wear it. Lots of mail, helmet, where you can see his face, theater and film productions take note, sword, shield, tunic over the top of the mail. And by the way, guys, you do know that you can color code the tunics, right? So even if you had a full face helmet, you could still do like medieval Power Rangers and still be able to tell who everyone was. Just a thought, color coded cloth tunics underrated option for being able to tell people apart, I'm just saying. This one is the Elementalist Elite Stormforged Armor. <laughs> Sorry, okay, it's a strapless bra which is attached to a collar with some weird shoulder pieces on it by means of some black string. The collar is very catwalk model, so there's that. At the bottom we've got some bikini bottoms at the front, mini skirt at the back with a sort of mesh overlay. There are some purple go-go boots with high heels, naturally. There's also a belly chain. Was this made in the late 90s or early 2000s? Came out in 2005, okay, yeah, that does explain it. And of course there are van braces because you have to protect your forearms. Very important to protect your forearms. Not your vital organs, but your forearms. Just stab me now, but it's amazing and I kind of love it. Also, side note, this woman just doesn't look right and nor does the man actually. They both look like they've been spliced with giraffe DNA. Anyway, moving on. Magic the Gathering, Scion of Peace and Scion of War. People do not seem to love helmets generally today, but never mind. I do like the Ice Guy's crown. Ice Guy also has little icicles on his pauldrons and they are spiky, but on the other hand, they are quite short, so it's going to be quite hard to spike yourself in the ear with them. And also because they're ice, it's not going to be so much of a concern that someone can grab them. A high pretty good to you, sir. For the lady, I mean, I really wanted to give her a high pretty good as well because I really love the design of the armor, but if you could just, just add a little bit more to the breastplate, just under the boob. You don't have to go all the way down, obviously, because you're trying to give her some room to maneuver from side to side, but just a little bit more would have been better. I'm just saying. Still pretty good though. This next one is a request for the armor worn by Harry Dresden's allies in the novel Battleground in the Battle of Chicago. And I have been putting this off for a couple of reasons. First, because I have read Peace Talks and Battleground and they made me sad, so I wasn't really, what's the word, overly enthusiastic about reading them again. But second of all, because it's a book and so there are no pictures, which means that everything just sounds kind of good. So you have John Marcone, or Marcone, or Marconi, I still don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, uh, and he's wearing a scale shirt of possibly modern or magical origin, which goes under his suit. Molly Carpenter is wearing a magic wetsuit. Various characters are wearing hunting leathers with mail over the top. The pixies are wearing full gothic plate, including helmets. There's a lot of tactical gear going on as well. There's, there's a wide variety of stuff and all of it sounds good. But obviously all of it sounds good because you just conjure up, pun fully intended, whatever you think looks cool and practical in your own mind. There are a couple of exceptions, but anyway. Harry Dresden, wizard and main character, originally is in a spider silk suit, which I would absolutely wear because it's also ensorcelled. And also suits. Who doesn't love a suit? Eventually, in Battleground, he ends up in his usual t-shirt and jeans and his black leather duster with all the spells on it to protect him from stuff. I mean, it's Harry Dresden. If he weren't wearing that, it would kind of feel wrong. He still doesn't wear hats. Personally, I wouldn't particularly care for Molly Carpenter's magic wetsuit, but she does at least get to cover her whole body, unlike Lara Wraith, Queen of the Vampires, who basically goes into battle in her underwear. Because of course she does. Just stake her now, please, as a personal favor. But in books in general, you can say basically what you like about armor because as long as you're not too specific about it, people will just envision something that looks cool to them. 
Soleil from Fire Emblem Fates. I mean, there's nothing bonkers about this outfit, though I do question how high those heels are. If they hide your feet in shame, then I get suspicious, okay? Bonus points for Gambazon as part of your armor. I do love a Gambazon, but still those shoes. Pretty good though. N7 armor from Mass Effect. Looks futuristic and like it would stop a laser bolt or whatever it is that they're up against in the Mass Effect universe. I don't even know. But there's a lot of articulation because it's made up of a lot of smaller pieces. Also, they have helmets, though you can toggle them off so you can see their faces. Good job all round. I'd wear it. Guild Wars Elementalist Obsidian Armor. First of all, we gotta lift this out of the Just Stab Me Now category because they did at least cover her body. Well done. But those pauldrons without a helmet, you are 100% gonna stab yourself in the head every time you raise your arms even slightly. Also props that in this armor set, at least, notwithstanding anatomical differences, the armor sets look the same on the male and female model. This is not always the case. Hilda? Hilda from Soul Calibur 4. Is that a helmet I see? Okay, I'd wear it right off the bat. They gave her a helmet, no high heels and full plate. Like, good job. However, there is a lot of ornamentation on here. And I mean, a lot. Notwithstanding the giant wolf head pauldron, look at all the swirlies and twirlies. And I mean, I love swirlies and twirlies if they're inlaid on the surface, but if they're raised up and you're a melee fighter, things are gonna get stuck in that. But still, it looks really cool and I'd wear it. It was alleged to me that in Soul Calibur 6 it got worse, and yes, it did, it did, but they did make an effort to give her some body coverage and a breastplate and... Oh, those are high heels. Eh. Eh. The Mandalorian. We have discussed this a couple of times before, but basically the short version is I'd wear any of these, but I do have a preference for no capes and also a preference for the Oli visors. While eyes are cool and since they're sci-fi helmets and they all have heads up displays inside them anyway, it doesn't really matter what the visor shape looks like, but owls are cool, all right? Owls are cool. I made a note for this next one and it read, Sylvester McCoy, who, Battlefield, Morgane, Mordred, Anselin. That required some parsing when I came to look it up again. Sylvester McCoy as the Doctor does not wear any armor in this episode. I don't know if he wears armor at any other time, but that's not really the point. We are looking at this lady, this chap, and this chap as well. And honestly, for any era of Doctor Who, I think these guys look all right. You can tell that the male is knitted, obviously, because of the pattern of it, but for Doctor Who, guys, you're not doing too badly. Not doing too badly. The Queen, however, is clearly an eh. I mean, I can tell that they tried, but the shape of that breastplate, you can see that she can't really move in it. You can see that she can't bend properly because it just goes right down to her hips and there's no attempt at articulation at all. This guy is Anselin and I'd wear that. It just looks pretty solid. I mean, he then takes it off and runs around fighting people without his armor on, but still. This guy, I mean, points that he's wearing a helmet, but I'm really concerned about his lack of vision. That's a very, very tiny slit and the thing is, about the tiny slit, that it, it seems like there's a, an extra layer underneath it, which just makes it look really weird, like it's not really there at all. I'm gonna go with pretty good, because the rest of it is good, and he is at least wearing a helmet, but that helmet is so ugly. I just, I, I would not wear it. I would not like to wear it, I'm just saying. And just briefly, our last one for the day is the Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy Dissidia. Are those some truly ridiculous horns? Yes. Do I love this anyway? Yes. Could I have done without the horns and the spiky elbows and the ponytail thing? Yes. Would I wear it anyway? Yes, absolutely, it is just that cool. <sighs> if you're a patron or channel member and you've watched all the armor videos in the playlist and you're thinking, wait, you didn't actually do my request. I have probably put it on a list somewhere and forgotten about it. So just message me and you know, we'll get it next time. Don't worry about it. But I think that we're basically done with the patron and channel member requests at this point which is great. At this point, we're just going back to anybody can leave me a request for an armor review, but I'm probably not going to do most of them because I'm just going to pick and choose the ones that I feel like I have proper opinions about. Like, for example, after I made this video, I discovered that there is a Harry Dresden book trailer for both Peace Talks and Battleground, and uh, while it doesn't really have a lot of the main characters in their outfits, aside from Harry Dresden, obviously, it does have Ethnew. I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly. Ethnew? The, the point is she's wearing her titanic bronze armor, which seems to mostly consist of plastic and body paint. When I say that I understand that book trailers are often lower budget propositions, trust me, I, I understand, but the body paint really threw me, I'm gonna be honest. Anyway, time for some advertising of me. If you would like some Just Stab Me Now merch in either this design or the design that is on the book cover, that would be the novel that I wrote, 
based on the fantasy heroin series, then it is available in my spread shop, which it will be linked down in the pinned comment and the description. I'm gonna get some new Just Tabby Now merch and I'm very excited about it. Also some merch with the Sword Lady Books logo on it because it's super if you'd like to watch another armor video instead, then there are links to the side of my face, and I will see you all next time.